Hey there everyone, happy Monday. My name is Joni, this is Weathered Wings, and we are gonna stamp something cute today, okay? So my iPad or my computer was dying so I cannot send um, notification, texting to my texting community. So I hope you all hop on um, and if you do, let me know where you're watching from. All right, so we're just gonna be using, um, I've got these wooden blocks, okay? Just look, they're just regular wooden blocks. These are those, um, what are they, two by six, I think. They come in, um, they're two inches thick, six inches wide, and they come in these big, long, uh, like eight feet things at Lowe's, eight feet in length at Lowe's or Home Depot. My husband will just cut them up in different um, different sizes. I why I keep holding that up. In different sizes. But look, if you don't have these little wood pieces, you can always go to Hobby Lobby. And look, they always have these little cute, um, they look like, you know, they're very similar, right? They're like two inches thick. Some of them look like wood, but you can always paint it, right? So I'll do one like this too. So I'll slide that one over, but I'll have to find something smaller. All right, so I've already given this one a coat of paint. So let's do another one. Let me just do this one. I don't have anything picked out to uh, stamp. You know what though? I'm, I'll just stamp the B. How about that? But I'm also using some drop cloth, okay? Hey, Laurie, hey, Kitty. Faye's here and Joycey. Hey, ladies, I'm glad I got the, um, glad I can see the comments, yay. Okay, so I had some scrap uh, painter's cloth, drop cloth, you know, just this little uh, stuff right here. And I love to paint and stamp on these things. So all you do, I've already cut some out, but I was just gonna kind of measure. Do I have my, I'll say, surely I have my scissors, I've been using them. All these strings are everywhere. All right, so again, this is just a little, you know, you can find these all the time, y'all, in the clearance section at a Hobby Lobby. They always have these little things. Um, you know, for sale. And I think this was like, it was marked 250, but I think it was something off that. So you want to um, rip the fabric so that way it gives you these uh, fun little frayed edges. Okay. And then you can get your, you can get your fraying as, as much as, you know, as wide as you want it just by keep uh, pulling the strings. That's all you have to do. And I may not have, I may have gotten this one a little too big actually. Let's see. I can always fray it a little more. Maybe that's what I should do. And then I could always cut it, but let's just do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to show you. See, all the strings are loose right there, so you just kind of pull them, and that's how you keep getting your frays. I need some better scissors is what I need. And so I can cut them shorter if I need my whole deal. Can you tell how bad these scissors are? Oh my word. These are crafty scissors, they're not fabric scissors. All right, all right, so that's how you do that. And then you just paint it. I think, though, I wanna use this large one. I think I'm changing my mind, but you would do it the exact same way, okay? So, there you got that. But I wanted to stamp the bunny, and I need this larger one. So, I'm going to use aviary. Okay, I'm using DIY paint and aviary, which is a pretty green. Um, hey Lisa, hey Meg, how you doing? All right, let me find another paintbrush. I love when I can see, um, when I do the comments. Hey Cheryl, 
Paula's here. Hey, 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 Julie. Hey, Don. Hey, Shannon. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Even though I didn't send out the text, I'm so glad you're here. So at least Facebook did send something. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to give it a coat of paint. You really don't need but one coat because you're really going to cover it up. Again, this is aviary. I just think it's a really pretty, you know, just a medium green. It's great for spring. I don't know what that is. And we're just going to give it a coat of paint. So are y'all enjoying, um, well, I say enjoying, but are y'all having good weather? We are just having the prettiest weather. I'm sure we'll have another cold spell. All my little azaleas are blooming. And then they'll, they'll get hit with some cold probably and just turn brown. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who am I missing? I love this color too. This is one of my favorite greens. You know, but DIY has a lot of greens and I love them all actually. I do. Um, there's... Fancy Farm Girl, I almost used that. It's a little bit brighter. There's Monet's Garden, that's kind of an emerald green. Uh, you just can't go wrong. I love green, so maybe that's why I love green. And again, you can get these little blocks. You can even ask them to cut it for you if you don't, um, you know, if you don't have someone at home that can cut these for you. You can ask them to do it. Now they may, they'll probably charge you, but I don't think it's much. And the whole, you know, the whole strip of wood is not much either. Well, I say that, I hadn't bought any in a long time and I know wood has gone up. Maybe easier just to find you a little something in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby. See, that's one coat, and that's, that's good enough. That's all we're going to do. Let me get this. Now, if you were using white, you may have to do two coats. But I'm, I'm using this drop cloth, so I don't want to use white. I want to color. What is that? Something is just trying to aggravate me. Whoa, I need my apron on. Me too, Gina, me too. Hey, Patricia. It does, I've got spring fever, right? I do. And this weather, I mean, it's been in the upper 70s, y'all, and sunny. Um, my daughter, you know, she's getting married in May, and we had her tea um, yesterday. And it was such a gorgeous day. All right, so we're going to dry that. Let me put these over here to the side for a second. All right. I'll answer that in just a second, Don. That's a good question. Some holes in it, so I'm just gonna fill them up real quick. All right, so I'm gonna let this one finish drying, and we'll we'll do this little gray one. Um, but Don asked a good question about the stamps. He said, do you cut them up or um, just leave them on there or peel them off? So let me show you. Um, all right, I'll show you this because this is a new one. And I wanted to use this stamp with this gray block that I've already got dry. Is this, this didn't dry though. Hold on. I'm going to have to actually go ahead and dry it, y'all. Can't pick it up. 
You just draw the sides. I love that little white goes down on. I should have brought um there's some there's a product and it's called a thin mount and that's what a lot of people will use and it looks a lot like just the top part of your stamp but it has grid lines on it to make it um i cut those up all the time and they have paint all over them. mine all have paint on them but they're like this they're um they're a little bit harder plastic and you can cut them up and place your stamp on here so you'll have something to hold on to or you can just cut them off either way you can take them off or you can cut them on here like i did these all right so this is the melange this is the melange stamp and i cut a bunch up i used it the other day and I cut them right off of, I kept them on the plastic that they were on, and I just cut around them. So I've cut a bunch of them like that. So if they're kind of big like this, I do that. See how I've cut around them? I did not even pull this off. So I thought I would use that cow on something. And then this bird, this is the new birds and bees. I've not used this one. So let me think what I'm gonna do. I think, cause this one has some really little ones on there too. I wish I had my, let me see. So when you, first thing you need to do though y'all is if you have not used them, like I've not used these, you wanna sand them a little bit. This is a, well this is a 400 grit. I usually use something a little stronger. Maybe 220. This is a 180. This isn't going to mess it up, but it's a little bit uh, rougher. And I just kind of just go over all of them lightly. You don't have to do it much. You're just giving it a little tooth. I love that big uh, bumblebee. It's awesome. off of here and use it like this which is probably best if you're using it on something curved um, so you can so it's flexible but if it's flat like this and you have something to keep up with them right like I keep them in that plastic pouch you can just cut around them so I think what I want to do Pull this one off. This one has a lot I can um, hold on to. Look at me, can I drop it? Um, so I'll see if I can just use it like this today, just to show you, in case you don't have a thin mount or you don't want to cut your pieces up. All right. So now, got my little board. It's dry, just dry, not sealed or anything. We don't need that. I did want to though take some white paint. See if there are any questions. Um, are there products to use with the stamps for clothing? Are there products to use with stamps? Uh, you can use the ink, and that's what I'm gonna use. Um, yeah, so the ink works really good on clothes. You can, it's uh, permanent. You can heat set it. Uh, so really good. All right, so I'm gonna get one of those little things back out. Actually, I should have kept one. Pour a little bit of paint on it. I hope that was your question. And let's see. I don't know which way I want to do this. There's several ways. Now I'm going to use this little wooden, flat little wooden thing. You can use a brush. You can use a popsicle stick. I just kind of want to, this is white by the way. This is white swan. I just poured a little bit of paint out. And I just kind of wanted to, instead of, 
waxing it, like with white wax or, or painting it white and then distressing it. This is really easy just to kind of get the same look. Just kind of dry brushing a little white on here. I'm just gonna randomly, because you're not gonna see this except on the edges, right? Very subtle, but I just I love it. You can do this with any color too. If you wanted it dark, if you wanted to use a brown and kind of make it look distressed, like aged or brown, I mean or black. And so look. Again, if you don't have one of these little wooden pieces, you could do the exact same thing I'm doing with one of these little clearance, little signage, little blocks, okay? Hobby Lobby, tons of them. All right, let me dry this real quickly. It's not gonna take long, because that's not a lot of paint. bleach flannels. I love those. Yes, yes, you can do ink. However, we did something in our group one time. If anybody's on here, help me remember. Um, but we stamped denim and we used the white ink and it seemed to be not bright enough, not light enough on the denim. Um, I just remember that for some reason. All right, so... Let's see here. I know I've already cut some pieces, a piece to go with that. All right. You saw how I showed at the beginning how to how to get your uh, drop cloth, how to just cut it and rip it. Very easy. All right. So I'm actually just I'm gonna leave it right there because that's a good even spot. And I'm gonna take this is the bird I want to use. I'm actually gonna do it up and down. Okay, I'm gonna do it uh, this way. I wanna do it this way. All right, so look here. I don't wanna, um, I better not do that because that could slip. Did y'all see that? I wanna be careful because when I put this down, this kind of went like that. That just, I don't know. Let me think about this a minute. I may want to put it on a thin mount. I think I did. It's pretty big. Let's see. Let's just do this. I'm going to go back to what I was saying originally and just cut it out. I have to be careful. Sometimes they're so close to the other one. Like that. Hold on one second. I'm just going to grab a thin mount. Sorry, y'all. I thought I had everything I needed. Okay, but this is a thin mount. This is what I was talking about. It's just a um, piece of thicker plastic. It has grid lines on it, which this comes in handy when you're trying to spell out a word, you know, with the letter stamps, because you have um, these lines here. You can line up all the letters and spread out the word, and then you can stamp the word all at one time. So that's really the way this is used mostly. So look, I'm gonna take this back off and let me show you what I meant. Some of these are so close. See right here how close that is together? It just, it's just gonna make it really hard for me to cut it out is all. All right, let me put that over there. Okay, and I'm just 
just going to stick this on here. And if for some reason it doesn't stick, you know, the more you use it, the less it's going to stick. Just put a uh, rub and alcohol, clean, clean the back of it with rub and alcohol. And it should be good. All right, so I'm just going to cut it. And you can just store it like this. You can just store it, and, and you'll see how much easier it is now for me to just hold it and go down like that. Because you see how I was a little I was struggling, just a little bit. All right, so I've got my ink here. Put some of this up. Here's my ink pad. I'm gonna add a little just to make sure. I think I have enough, but I'm not sure. I always add some for some reason. All right. Now, this, you can use your brayer. Let me just save my brayers. So, hmm, I was wondering where it was. This, oh, here it is. I was about to say, I have one that rolls better. All right, so you can actually just stamp like on top like this. Or you can roll your brayer in your ink. Let's just try this way. I'm going to try this way. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Let me move it up. Some. Okay, now you can see. want to go straight down and straight up because you will have a tendency see to get it on the on the edge and that is why a lot of times I do like to use my brayer just in case I don't like all this around the edges like that and I don't know why it's just it's hard not to get it there But I want to make sure I have enough. So let me do it this way too. I'm just going to see. But your brayer keeps it more right on the top there. And see how I'm getting a lot more on there? All right, let's see how we do. as much as possible. Hold it. Okay. You can do this with paint as well. I've done pillow um, covers with paint instead of the ink. Ooh, I almost got in got this cloth a little too narrow. This may not even be the one I was supposed to be using. <laughs> It'll be fine. And we have colored, uh, lots of colors for your ink. So the green would actually be pretty. We've got a red, we've got green, we've got gray, there's a white. Let's see. The ink seems to give a little better, finer detail, I should say. Not necessarily better, but finer. All right, and then I'm just going to, now I have these little, I don't know where my, I could only find my silver ones. But, um, so you could paint these. Where's, maybe I should just, Yeah, I won't push them all the way down because I'll want to paint them like a dark uh, color, like a brown. Okay. 
and I'll paint them while they're sticking up so I won't get it on the fabric and then I'll just push them down but how cute is this I just it's so cute let's see I'm missing hey Ari hey Joycey I think there's a medium you can add there is a medium there is a textile uh medium but um the inks do work good but yeah there is a textile medium I, I, oh what's it called i actually have some i can picture it i can i can look in just a minute um uh -oh. also my stamps came with yes the what I, oh keep those don because stamping is i mean masking you mask with those little uh well, that's what they're called, mask. So when you mask, that's how you, like you, you can stamp with different uh, different stamps and make them look like they're ones on top of the other without blurring the design. So you would stamp. Um, I have a good method for that. I actually have a video on that uh, that I'll need to send you. But but it's awesome. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to mask. All right. So that's that one, y'all. Look how cute that is. I love it. Let's see how the green is going to look, okay? And again, let's see. I would just use DIY paint. Let me grab it and see if I have that one. You could leave it silver, which looks pretty good with the gray and the black, by the way. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because this paint just covers anything. This paint's about dried up, but that's okay. So I would just, just probably take a couple of coats. They're pretty uh, slick. You could also um, just rub them with some dark wax. You have to do one little light coat this is like priming it, and then you can come back with another one. And another thing, y'all, I always love to give options in case you don't have all this stuff that I have. Um, if you don't have these little nail heads, you could use hot glue and just, um, you know, swirl around like it's a little nail head and paint it same way. All right, so that'll dry. I'll give it another coat, and then and then I'll nail them down. Okay. All right, so let's set that over there. Let's get our white back out. Ooh, oh no, what did I do with that? What did I do with that white that I poured out? I feel like I've got it somewhere. Oh, it's up here. I thought. Oh, first I thought I just had stuff laying on it. Uh, don't, there it is. There's my little wheel. So I'm going to do the same thing with the green. Just give it a little, uh, just dry brushing type look with the white. Looks like I'm missing questions. Hey, Tana, how are you? I'm glad you caught me too. Um, oh, it froze. Okay, Cheryl. Okay, so you two must be in red. Hey, Liz. Yay, I'm glad you caught me. Can you share the map? Um, I will. I'll have to find it. I'll have to find it. But um, can you, are we? Can we not search on Facebook anymore? Like I know it's a I know I did a methods to my madness Monday with stamping, but I will um, I'll find it and and post it in this thread. How about that? I will do that. Hey Marie, I will definitely do that. One project I remember stamping that I that I used the mask so much was with the fruitful harvest with the pumpkins. I loved it. I loved it. It's just so cool looking. You can do so much. All right. So that's 
that. We'll just leave it like that. Just, just haphazard. All right, just gives it a little stop, stop. All right. Totally optional, of course. All right, so now let me get this. This is the long piece, so I cut it out for there. And now I want to use the bunny. The bunny, the bunny. All right, so this is from the farm animal stamp. So it has, um, I actually cut that out and gave it to Joyce. I think I gave it to you. <laughs> I think it was a rooster. Um, anyway, so here, again, now these are big enough where you actually could cut it. Um, this one, you could leave it on here. Let's do that. I'll show you that way too. Hold on. I'm spilling everything. So see, you can keep it right on the plastic and cut it out. And just keep it. Let me just make sure I'll cut the cut the um, head of this cow. Now look, either either of these is a good size for um, and this. What size is this board? I'll have to cut that a little bit. So you know they're two by six, and then this one is nine and a half. Nine and a half. I think I think that nine and a half is good for these crosses that I was doing. But here we go. So is that dry enough? It's dry enough. All right. there. Get the ink again. Now I've used this one several times. You can see I've got it uh, got white all over it. So I hope it's clean. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Why is it? Why do I keep getting out of the camera? All right. All right here I go. I'm going to use this again. I love this little bunny. It's so cute. And it's big. Um, but, you know, if, if you've got something that you want the bunny on and this is too big, you know, it's cute even just doing it halfway. It's cute. I'm just going to get some of this off. And you don't necessarily have to clean that off because hopefully it's, you're not going to press it down hard enough. But those, that little area is little. All right, let's just see what we got. Sometimes I'm afraid I don't ever get enough on there with the ink. All right. You see, I have something to hold on to, which makes it very nice. And then just flop it down. Make sure you hold it in place. Delta, that's the name of that uh, fabric medium. <laughs> Just came to me. And there's some like 3D, or I used to just get some fabric paint at Michael's when my kids were in school and made little homecoming shirts, you know, and put paw prints on it because we were the lions. Um, so that was fun. Just make sure I'm, pr I'm pressing down pretty hard on this just because it is with the ink and it um, tends to be lighter than Let's see. 
See how much lighter it is? But I love it. And we actually have a gray, so the gray would be super light. But see the detail? The detail is really good. Right? It's really cute. And that's it. I mean, you could, before you nailed it on or, you know, used your little studs, uh, it probably probably would be good just to heat set it. But, I mean, you're not ever going to wash this or anything. And you can heat set it with this. I'd really heat set anything like with the iron and all that or pre-wash as if I'm making pillows or something. But even then, I don't really, I don't really wash my, that stuff too much. I change it out more so than washing it. Um, all right, so you just do the same thing with your little nail heads. Or what These are called um, furniture nails. I found these on Amazon. And I have them in my Amazon store, probably. But they're just little tacks, little tacks. You could just use regular little tacks, probably. These are just rounded and they're kinda, um, no, they're just rounded and slick. I thought they had like some texture to it, but they don't. Is there a particular way to load your ink pad? I like to just um, take my ink. I'll show you in just a second. So when you first get your ink pad, yeah, you have to really soak it. And again, I would paint those, uh, paint those with brown paint. I wonder if the wax, I don't know. You know, after, I would paint it though, cause that will stick better. And then you could probably just put dark wax over that paint. Maybe easier and, and a little darker. All right, so there's that one. That's cute on the green. I love that. Love it. Um, let's see here. What other one did I have? Just gonna paint that one too. I should have already painted it. Just if y'all wanna see another one, I'll do another one. Um, but the ink pad, so you would just take your, uh, that's what I do. I just take my um, ink and I just kinda do this. And you'll see it. See how it's sinking in? It sinks in. See? And you just keep doing it till you, um, till it's just solid. Okay? But it just, you know, you don't want to keep doing it. If it, if it doesn't sink in, if it starts just kind of <laughs> dribbling over the side, you, you've got plenty. All right? That's enough. Um, but yeah, I'll just uh, stamp this and paint it this one later. But I wanted to stamp this one. I'll just show you that one real quick. So let me just, since I just filled it up, let's do it with my brayer. And again, this one I cut from the uh, backing that it was on. I just left it on the its piece. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't sand it. Let's just see how we do. So again, the sanding, you know, just gives it a little tooth so it won't slip around, but maybe it won't slip since this is fabric. We'll see. We shall see. You can even stain your piece of wood if you'd rather just have it natural. You could just uh, put a little dark and decrepit on it, actually. All right, this one's really cute. It's got the little, um, oh, it's got three crosses. I didn't even notice that. So it's got the little, I'll show you in just a minute. It's got the trees, the little, um, the little house back here. And then there's three crosses. Really pushing down on those small areas. But these are really cute, just shelf sitters. <laughs> That's 
hard to say. Shelf sitters. Um, you know, if you then include it in, with some other items, just little beignet. It's really cute. Some greenery. I think the bunny's my favorite so far. I love the green. I think that's why. So I may paint this one green. Get those three crosses right there. I did not see those. All right, let's lift it up. Ah, yes, I love it. I didn't notice those three little crosses right there. But that's really good. I should have used a different color ink. So y'all could see that. Let's just do one more on some scrap sheet. I'll show you the green. Any questions on this though? Hey, Danielle. How are you? Hey, Brenda. Meg. Yes, I love the tacks. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece here and green ink and let's see let me find a little a little something else off of this one maybe just a B I don't know a B in green hmm maybe weird looking but I wanted to do the here we'll do this bird because I think it'll fit on this Good enough. Just want to see what, what the color looks like. All right, and again, I'm gonna just put it, go ahead right now and put it on a thin mount. easier just to do them all at one time, all while they're on the sheet, just sand it. It does make your life a lot easier though if you have these. Um. Oh, you think it's a fence? have another brayer that will roll good so I'm gonna just uh, get this off let's see if it has enough ink in there this is a I love this color green it's called new grass but uh yeah it's it's a limey type green this would look good with the uh, the new transfer that um, that's kind of tropical. Let's just see how this looks. And I did iron those things, by the way. I'm gonna do it crooked just so I can get it all on there. Just want to see. And again, I'm using you know this drop cloth, which is pretty dark. You could use um, some. Just white little fabric. There's all kind of little fabric you could use. And I think I just uh, smeared this. But that's the green. A little bit, uh, I would love it on some white fabric. In fact, I did it on a, on a lamp the other day. Um, but anyway, that's it. So we had the little, we have this cow, the bird. Hopped on late. This is our. This was the first one that we did. It's really cute, and I've got these tacks just sticking up so that I can paint them. Uh, uh you know, paint them without getting it on the. To 
just going to tap it like that. And then they kind of, but you can order these in bronze or, but you know, it's just easier if you, you know, if you want to do it like this. And again, even the hot glue, just put you a little circle of hot glue and paint it dark. Okay, like that. And then we have the bunny. This one. All right. Put that one there. Yeah. So fun little project. Do you have any questions? Yeah. It is. The green is so pretty. It's just it's just a little it's just kind of light. But it is really pretty. It's really pretty on white. Um that's it. Let's see. Do you buy any specific drop cloth? Uh, you know, Lisa, I ordered this one a long time ago because it was seamless and I was making some curtains, um, some like awning type things. But no, you don't, you don't have to order. I, I just, this is just scrap that I had left. Normally I just get that at Lowe's, just that kind of Lowe's. Um, the white stuff was just paint, Barbara. It was just a uh, white swan paint. And I just used my little wooden thing right here. I poured out some paint. I just poured some out and dipped this in there and, and just kind of went across like this after I painted my piece. And see how it just kind of gives it a little, just gives it a little something, you know, fun. You don't have to do that part. Uh, Laurie says the green looks like grass. Well, that's what it's called, new grass. New grass. And it really is pretty. Here's part of the lamp. I hadn't finished it, but um, we started doing um, a lamp in the Creative Junkies. But see how pretty it is on white? Isn't that gorgeous? So I went all the way around. I think I'm going to go all over, actually. After I started adding it, I was like, ooh, I really like that. I want it all over. Um, these size tacks, Mary, are, let's see, I don't know, they're just, uh, they're just called furniture nails, and you probably get these at Lowe's too, Walmart, but I don't know, they're about the, I don't know what size that is. I don't even know if they come in different sizes, actually. I, I'm, I'm sure they do, but this doesn't have a size on there. Just doesn't have a size. I don't know, but I'll try to find my link if y'all want me to. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank y'all. Okay. I think I answered everything. Thank you, Don. Do you clean the... Yes. Yes. You clean the ink. And I like to use... And you need to clean it uh, pretty quickly, actually. But just a baby wipe cleans them really well. You can also just have a, a bowl of water, soap and water, just sitting there. The ink really will. Now, if you use paint, like DIY paint, that comes off pretty easily. But I usually just like to take a baby wipe and clean them. But yes, they do need to be cleaned. Absolutely, thanks, Don. That was a good, good observation. All right. Oh, hey, Chris. I didn't see you. Hey, hey. Uh, let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. Hey, Gracie. Good when you want leaves to look like they are on the back of flowers. Yes, Joyce. That's, yes. Um, yeah, the masking, actually, y'all, is really cool. I was just going to see if I had a mask right here just to kind of, because you... What you do is put the mask over something. Let's see what this is. This is the melange stamp. And, and my problem is I can't ever, I lose these things. Um, and before these, I used to just stamp on some brown paper and that would be my mask, right? But these are so clear. Well, I can't even get the bag open. What the heck? All 
All right, so there's the chicken. Okay, there's a chicken. And then, what else is on here that I could just show you? What is that? Got another chicken? All right, let's just, let me just show you this real quick. I'll just do it on the, on a piece of paper. How about that? On this. Oh, it's not Melange. I called it Melange. I was La Campagna. La Campagna. All right. Let me just show you real quick. All right. So you have to have the stamps and you have to have the corresponding mask. So. There's the chicken. Now this isn't probably a good uh, good one to use example wise because well I don't know we'll just see all right so now and you have to think it through because I get a little confused sometimes myself but what you want. Uh, just a, a quickie all right so all right so I'm just gonna put some ink on the rooster here so it's a rooster and a hen all right I'm gonna stamp the rooster All right, so what you want in front, actually I should have done this uh, actually backwards. What you want in front is what uh, you stamp first, okay? So, um, let's say that I want, actually, let's do this one. And I'm not going to cut these little baby chicks off, so let's I'll just... Try not to get it on there. All right, so here's the little hen. All right, so let me dry that real quick. So, I'm going to find my mask. Actually, I didn't even need both of them. So, I found my mask. This is the little mask that goes over the hen. So, you would place it on the hen. See, and it covers it up just perfect, right? Now, if you wanted this rooster, say, to be kind of like up and behind the hen. Now, again, this isn't a great example because this isn't something you normally do. All right, say we wanted him uh, to look like the hen is in front of the, the rooster. So you put your mask down, and that shouldn't be there because that may mess it up too. I hope I'm doing this right. I haven't done it in so long. And just kind of come. I was trying not to. Oh well, just pretend this one's not there, okay? Sitting a good example, but I I'll send you the link to that one that is. 
All right. So you lift, lift that up and you lift up, you know. And see how this, pretend he's not there, but see how the hen looks like he is standing behind the, I mean, the rooster looks like he's standing behind the hen. That's what masking does. And you can do so much with the masking, y'all. So much fun. Um, but that's it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I think all over you. Could you stamp on the mask and let it dry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, um, I, and in fact, I have done that. I've just kind of colored these a little bit because they're just hard. And look, because you can't keep them. Um, I mean, you can't put it back on that little sheet, so you just kind of have to, but look, yeah, you can do that. Stamp it, and then you can kind of see it. But, you know, but that's it. See how cute that is? And you could just have several little hens and have that one rooster behind there or something. Anyway, cute. All right, y'all, hope that was helpful. I think Jazzy's home. I got to go grab him. Don has stamp all over him. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. If